Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. My name is John. Uh, welcome to this new series where I'm going to build a Texic block into a Manly uh, 5.0 stroker. So 4.6 based Texic block into a 5.0. So a stroker kit can be a little bit involved. It's a little different than assembling a, a, a standard uh, engine. So I'm gonna go over it in pretty good detail in this series. Uh, I apologize if you already know this stuff. This is meant to be for somebody who hasn't done it before. And even if you do uh, have built an engine before, maybe maybe you'll pick up something. Hopefully I can teach something. I'll also keep a list below uh, in the comments section of all the part numbers that I'm using in this build. So what is a stroker kit and why is it a good idea to do one? Well, a stroker kit is gonna increase the displacement of your engine. And what most people say, there's no replacement for displacement. And there's two ways you can get displacement. And one of them is to increase the cylinder diameter. The other is to increase the stroke of the piston. What you're trying to do is increase the volume of, of your cylinder when the piston is at bottom dead center. That area that's left, that's how much the piston is sucking in. Multiply that by eight in this case with this V8, and that's gonna give you your displacement. And the combination of this stroker kit with a 30 over bore is going to give us five liters or 302 cubic inches uh, so let's take a look the kit i got from manly i ordered it to be balanced so i didn't have to take it to the machine shop or anything like that they balanced it and sent it out but first i want to take a look at the crankshaft uh, part number 190360 i'm going to get some measurements on this Before I pull the crankshaft out, I like to wear rubber gloves. Whenever I do engine internals, I like to wear rubber gloves, just a preference thing. I've actually seen uh, camshafts with thumbprint uh, etching from the acids from hand. So you don't have to wear gloves, but I recommend wearing gloves and I prefer to wear gloves. All right, here's our crankshaft. I got it on our Goodson crankshaft inspecting tool. You don't have to have this tool. Uh, I like it because it makes it easier to uh, inspect the crankshaft. Also comes with this inspection report. Okay, so this is actually pretty good. So this is all the measurements of the crankshaft. It's got the uh, rod journals, uh, the main journals, the diameters, the widths, and all that stuff. So I'm still going to take some measurements on it and uh, compare them against this and see how it, how it fares. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe it down. These are Chemtech uh, low lint, ultra low lint uh, towels. And uh, I use ATF, Redline ATF, because it has a cleaner in it. It's going to keep it, uh, keep it nice and lubricated, and it smells oh so good. Okay, so I got my micrometer and I got my build sheet. I'm going to take some measurements of the main journals. I'm not going to go into how to use a micrometer into detail. I'm sure there's plenty of other videos out there uh, on how to use a micrometer, but I will say when you're taking measurements, uh, you want to take uh, two different ones just to make sure that it, it stays the same and that your journal is not out of round. Uh, this is a brand new crank, so it shouldn't be out of round or anything like that, but uh, I'm going to check it and compare it to their numbers uh, just to see. Also, of note on the crankshaft is you got these oil uh, passages, or I don't know if you'd still call them galleries or not, but the oil goes through the uh, through the main journals out here to the rod. So when you're measuring, you want to make sure you don't. Uh, get on any of these little holes right here And now I'm gonna go in and measure my rod journal remember you got two of them on here So I, I like to take a, a couple of readings uh, For both rods just in case again. This is a brand new crank So it shouldn't have too much deviation, but if it were a used crank It's a good idea to measure where one would be and where number uh, five would be Okay, so comparing the two measurements, I have my measurements and I have the Manly uh, spec sheet. The spec sheet is just like uh, guidelines of, of ranges and what it should fall into. 
So for instance, on the main journals, we have 2.6568 to 2.6575, and we got 2.6572, so that's right smack in the middle of it. And for the rod bearings, they had a range between 1.9993 to 2.0000, and our rod journals measured in at 1.9994, so... Uh, we're within range there. A little on the smaller side of the spec for the rods, but that's okay. Uh, the crankshaft checks out. Everything is good. The next step will be to uh, get the bearings in the block, get some measurements of that, so that way we'll have our uh, main bearing clearance, and then we'll be able to put the crank in.